Okay. Man, this is ugly. Shadow. Switch. <laughs> okay, let's go. You want to chill out here for a bit? You want to come in the shop with me? What do you want to do? You haven't been in the shop yet. I think... I think I just ran into some accidental inspiration. Okay, you can chill right there, if you want. I'm not sure he would enjoy the shop anyway, so he can just chill there, I'll just check up on him. So, a little while ago, I got this little piece of wood here. Well, the piece isn't little, but it was a little while ago. Got this from my buddy, Tony. I suggested he make something out of it, but he doesn't have the time, and he's not sure what he would make out of it, so I brought it home. I think it would be cool to make a little sideboard and uh, I think we have some time for that today. Actually I don't even know if it's called a sideboard but whatever it's called. I'm gonna make one of them. This is not what I was going to do today. I was actually going to clean up in the shop, maybe film a few things, do some errands and whatever and get some footage for uh, montage for a future vlog but sometimes when inspiration strikes you just gotta go with it otherwise it doesn't get done i really like this piece of wood i think it's gonna be perfect for this build it's nice and chunky it's got like holes in it uh angles cut into it notches cracks and it's just oh, it's really nice it's got these saw marks in it lots of character just needs a little cleanup it's gonna work perfect Music! Actually, you know what would be better? Hang me, oh hang me I'll be dead and gone Hang me, oh hang I'll be dead and gone I wouldn't mind the hanging but Laying in the grave so long Poor boy, I've been all around this world I've been all around Cape Jordo And parts of Arkansas All around Cape Jordo Parts of Arkansas I got so goddamn hungry I could hide behind The straw poor boy I've been all around this world I went up on a mountain There I made my stand I went up on a mountain There I made my stand A rifle on my shoulder And a dagger in my hand Poor boy, I've been All around this world So hang me, oh hang me And I'll be dead and gone Hang me, oh hang me And I'll be dead and gone I wouldn't mind the hanging But the laying in the grave so long Poor boy, I've been all around this world So hang me, oh hang me And I'll be dead and gone Hang me, oh hang me, and I'll be dead and 
and gone I wouldn't mind the hanging But the laying in the grave so long Poor boy, I've been all around this world Put the rope around my neck They hung me up so high They put the rope around my neck And hung me up so high The last words that I heard them say It won't be long now for you die Poor boy, I've been all around this world <laughs> Sanding's boring. It basically uh, takes forever and then it's satisfying only at the end. Not satisfying to do. So, you don't need to see that. This is about what I'm looking for as a finished product before uh, putting a stain on there. Now when it comes to stain, there are certain woods that you don't necessarily want to stain, such as black walnut. Doesn't need it. A little oil, and this is gonna pop good. Or like uh, purple heart. Uh, imagine staining that, it would take away from its beautiful purple color. Now eventually over time, with exposure to the sun, this will turn brown, but if you keep care of it, it's gonna stay purple and it's gonna look fantastic. Just a little oil to make it pop and it's amazing. Those are my two favorite types of wood, especially when they're used together. Oh, here, perfect example. This is a uh, guitar uh, project that Clint is working on. Look at all those beautiful pieces of wood, all those different colors. I'm not sure what all of the uh, species are. Look at that burl, it's amazing. None of that is stain. That's all just the natural wood color. Here's an example of uh, black walnut. Here it's oiled, nice and rich. But on the other side, they stained it red. Why would they do that? They could have just gotten an actual red wood. It would have looked way better. This is already super pretty by itself. This is not a great example because uh, it's not sanded and prepped or anything, but Man, what a shame. What a shame. This type of wood, it's pretty obvious that you wouldn't stain this. Most people wouldn't. All it needs is a little oil to make the grain pop and bring out its richness. And then there's stuff like this. This is maple. Uh, maple doesn't really have a nice color to me. Some people don't believe in staining anything, which is fine. Me, when Stuff is just kind of plain like this. I like to stain a little bit. You can see here, whoever had it before me did stain some of it. This used to be a big conference table, but it's now it's just stock for me. Um, here you can see there's a little bit of a cool grain pattern in here. There's many different types of uh, maple grain that is desirable. Um, this is pretty ordinary for the most part in here, but I do have this. Here, this uh, little charcuterie board that I made is a uh, bird's eye maple. And this is basically just like the tree had a disease, but it's uh, it comes out really nice looking. This, I just oiled, no stain on here, but it has that nice orange color. But there's also like flame maple, quilted maple, all sorts of different types of maple. Um, and then here's some more that they stained and then some is just got a clear coat on it. In our case here, um, and like with this beam and stuff, the things that make it beautiful are its imperfections. And, the, you know, some of the grain, but you know, just the way that it looks, its character here. Um, and it can be greatly enhanced with some stain. That is, of course, if you believe in staining wood. For myself, I don't stain very much. And when I do, I prefer these two colors, although there is a lot on the market. I like Golden Oak um, by whoever makes it. In this case, we have Minwax, not a sponsor. Or my very favorite, Special Walnut. Also happens to be Ashley's favorite color. But different species of wood take uh, wood stain differently. Like for example, here we have 
on this bonsai tree. The wood here is a fir and that's golden oak on there. Over here, we have hemlock on this bonsai tree and that's also golden oak. Looks completely different. So we're gonna experiment. What looks better on here? We'll just do a little bit on the bottom. For obvious reasons, we're doing it on the bottom. Just in case one of them looks terrible and we can't get rid of it. Now these also have a clear coat on them, which makes them shiny. It's just the stain itself is not shiny and we can have different sheens uh, as well. And we may even try just an oil as well to see if it looks good with that. But the uh, starting color here, to me, it looks as though it probably an oil won't look that good. But we may as well try it. Why not? Need a little rag here. That'll do. Okay, first we'll go with golden oak. Put a little bit on there. Take another part of the rag, dip it in some special walnut. And by the way, if I didn't like any of these, maybe I'd experiment with some other colors. But these are what I carry most often. And then a little boiled linseed oil. It's a very typical woodworking oil safe to use with your hands because it doesn't stain it. It's just a literal oil. Okay, these are sat enough to wipe off. Try to get a clean part of the rag each go just so that we don't cross contaminate. Okay. I am not sure if I see much difference between the three, especially the oil and the special walnut. Hmm, now what do I like? I'm not sure. While it's wet like this, I'm actually going to take a picture, send it to Ashley, she's at work right now, and I'll let her decide what she likes. The reason being, while it's wet, it'll mimic what it'll look like when I clear coat it, likely with this or with some wax. Okay, so after having a look, she has decided that she likes the oil the best. So that's what we'll go with. Now for me, it's kind of odd going with oil for this type of color of a, of a wood, but it actually is a pretty nice color. So why the heck not? I got lots of this anyway, and I should use it if I got it. Sometimes this happens, you know, different species of wood take different types of finish differently. <laughs> Duh, can I say differently enough? Different is, <clears throat> different is great. Different wood takes different finishes differently and sometimes, you know, uh, you can just use oil and it does a lot for the color. It makes everything pop. Like I don't like oak and I don't like the color of maple so much. And I don't really like the color of pine, spruce and other soft wood. So I'll stain those rather than oil them. Typically I save it for the for the nice hardwoods or exotic woods that I have, but why not use it for this? I'm not even sure what this is. This might be, uh, judging by the grain on the side, it might be a fur, but it doesn't have that red color coming through. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Could be hemlock. That beam over there is hemlock. Uh, and it could be just regular spruce or pine. Who knows? It's a soft wood, that's for sure. Whatever it is, it's lived some life. And I really dig what it's turned into. I'm not even sure what it was used for. So, so another case of it has a story, but I don't know what the story is. I kind of wish I did know what it was for. Oh well, that's okay. It looks cool. So all this talk about stain for no reason, basically. And after completing this, I got both sides done now. I may have to change my whole philosophy on what needs to and what doesn't need to be stained and or oiled because this turned out way better than I expected. I love the color variant in it. Although if I didn't want there to be different colors popping through, I could just wood condition it. But I actually love the way this came out. This is making me think, what else could just be oiled? I don't think I'll change my mind on oak because I think oak is hideous. I don't like the uh, 
What's up, Henry? I don't like the color of oak, red or white, and I don't like the grain pattern most of the time. Sometimes it depends on what aesthetic I'm going for. But oak, I would go as far as to paint it if I didn't have to buy it, but that's kind of sacrilegious, so pretend I didn't say that if you're a woodworker. Uh, but after seeing this, maybe I'll give, you know, woods like uh, maple a chance. Most maple, in my opinion, is pretty plain looking when it comes to color. Not always, of course, uh, depending on what kind of maple it is. But uh, I usually just like the grain. But maybe I should oil more often. Dang, this turned out good. It blows my mind that people don't like uh, the variance in these softer woods. Um, although hardwoods do this too. They, a lot of people prefer that the variants follow the grain pattern, but I like it like this. Splotchy is the wrong word, but I can't really think of a better one where it's got like highlights and low lights and stuff like that, just kind of random. I love that. Oh, and I should say in regards to uh, maple, since we're still talking about color, um, although it is kind of boring as a blonde wood, it is actually good as a contrasting wood if you're using darker woods. So they complement other woods quite well. So it is uh, good for more than just its pretty grain. So no need to stain it in a lot of applications. It's just, I think if you're using maple exclusively, like for a floor or something like that, stain enhances it a lot. Um, but if you're making like a jewelry box or something like that, you know, you might want to use two contrasting woods, maple being one and perhaps black walnut being another or something. I don't know. Anyway, I got this balanced on a stick there. You can see that it moves pretty freely. I will let this cure. And while it is curing, did I just see Archie? I didn't know you were in here, bud. While this is curing, I should take my oily rags. You don't want to leave these out. You could burn your shit down. <laughs> it happened to Roger. That's not the best. Anyways, while it's curing, I'm going to uh, think of a base idea. I don't know if I want to do legs or what. I put these in a metal can. Less fire risk. Oh, you know what? Why don't I do what I actually was going to do in a montage? Put the new names on the door. Which, by the way, thank you very much, everyone who's gotten their name on the door here. If you would like your name with all these names, make sure you follow the link in the description. It's almost out of ink or something. There we go. Look, Melissa, you have your name on here twice, and it still looks like it's only half there. Come on. Not the smoothest segment in the vlog that I've ever had. Looks like I'm going to need to get a new pen. But for now, since it is the first of the month, I will get you guys on the door. Well... There we are, but don't worry. I'll get you good as gold as soon as I get a new one of these. Just keep an eye out for uh, those Patreon exclusive videos and I'll do it in one of those. This, so it doesn't happen again, it's gonna go in the garbage. Now tomorrow, when I have a better idea of what I wanna do for legs or a base, we'll continue. Oh, good boy. Just gonna do some yoga on this yoga mat. Oh, good scratches. There we go, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I had the evening and early this morning to think of... Was my scratch not good enough, buddy? No, you're just going to eat your own foot. I had a while to think of an idea for a, a base or legs or whatever for the, uh, what is this kind of table called that I'm trying to make here? It's not a sideboard. That's like a something else. No, I think it's like, I want to say buffet, but I don't know if that's right. What do you guys think that type of table is based off of what you've seen so far? It could be a sofa table because I see people put those types of tables behind their sofas. Yeah, but no, this is definitely for like, this if is... you have extra serving dishes, you... 
Hold put on. them on there. Yeah. I think it's, that's why it's called the buffet. I don't know. Whatever it's called. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do yet still. I do think I want to incorporate some steel, but I'm actually out of gas for welding. So I'll have to go get some. I actually just used the last of it up a couple days ago, finishing up uh, this bonsai tree. <laughs> this is PG. Don't lick that. Uh, finishing up with this bonsai tree for this customer who, by the way, uh, Ashley's doing my emails right now. The person who bought it, they actually, and this is super nice of them, they actually paid double for it for uh, just to be nice, which I think is amazing. So thank you so much. If you want to know who it is, I don't, I don't know if I feel like they want me to shout them out like that. But if you want to know who it is, go check out the... Uh, the build process videos. She she's in the live chat there, in most of them. Uh, but anyway, let me get uh, going on finishing up this area. It's it's very messy and disorganized and was supposed to be temporary. Like this, this is a this is a dresser. This not even a desk. As you can see, her legs don't go underneath it. <laughs> they just go against it. That's got to be uh, one of it's the most. One of the the most uncomfortable desks. Even our our bathroom vanity is a better desk. <laughs> Let me go finish that up. And also, though I forgot this was happening today. Well, I just forgot what day of the week it is. But it's Saturday. And that means I have a bit of an interview to conduct. So, this is local Linda. Hello. And uh, I guess this is our interview. Do you want to work here? Yes. Then you're hired. <laughs> so Linda's going to be helping out in the shop just being uh what do you want to what's the title? You get your own title. Oh, I get to make my own title? Artist assistant. That sounds very official. <laughs> Joe boy? <laughs> Joe boy. Joe girl. Joe girl, that's good. Perfect. Okay, so while you're doing whatever you want to do, free reign, do whatever you think needs to be done, I am going to go fill up this purple tank here so that I can finish that piece of wood thing. All right, perfect. Oh, I can't lift this with one hand, it's really heavy. I just needed two hands. <laughs> All right, let's roll. also need to get some of this. I didn't get it on camera, but these two cars were trying really hard not to race each other. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't start filming them from the red light, because I really thought they were going to race. But they didn't, for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I definitely would have. I love... Well, look at... That we're here. We can get this purple nurple filled. There we go. This thing was super freaking heavy. It's a way bigger bottle than the one that I brought in, and it's also not purple anymore. Well, except for the, the cap is purple, but uh, same gas, bigger bottle. I didn't have any of the size that I like left this will last longer so there's that but it's even more in the way than the last one was or like stuff like this drawer and whatnot but that's okay but check out the progress so far in the short time that i was gone linda's just on a roll anyways i guess i should get to work maybe some brainstorming first i don't know what to do i was thinking on the drive maybe i would do wood legs what do you think linda should I do metal legs or should I do wood legs? Or maybe a combination of both. I wanna do very simple sleek legs, like uh, like maybe uh, sawhorse or X's or something. I would go metal. Metal? Yeah. It might complement the wood nicely. Yeah. Let's see what I have, I guess. <sighs> okay, a mix of metal and wood. You can see I got a lot in here, <laughs> that's a bummer. Um, these, these could work depending on how I use them. 
Okay, what else? Maybe some wood. I got some two by fours over there. Now the only thing I'll have to worry about is it being the same color. Uh, oh, I have a two by three here, which will be a little better because it'll look a little more sleeker and elegant. I want them to be a little dainty. One thing I'll have to worry about is whether or not it'll come out as the same color as the top. One thing uh, I realized is I never mixed the stain colors, which is probably why they match the oil so well. So maybe, maybe I'll have to experiment to make the wooden legs be the same as the top. I don't think I have another two by three in here, but a two by four ripped down will do. How about that one right there? It's already a nice short length. And this one right here, perfect. Aren't you a pretty dog? Aren't you a pretty dog? Yeah. Aren't you a pretty dog? Aren't you a pretty dog? Aren't you a pretty dog? Can we get dog? Yeah, it's your hard ass. Zoe, I seem so mean. I'm not a mean guy. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, you still nervous? <laughs> <laughs> oh! It's okay, buddy. Oh, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can make this work. Perfect. Like it was meant to be. Now I just have to rip these down to match because that looks silly. Some shaping to do, but I think this will work out. But maybe not. figure out now just how I want everything to be situated. It needs to be stable and not easily shook. We don't have much width to work with here, so I have to do some messing around and some modification. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Hopefully. Hey, Linda. Yes. Put your headphones on for a second. The freaking, uh, <laughs> the motor came off. Maybe that's why I got it for free. <laughs> Shit. I think the issue is this screw right here is supposed to hold this pin, uh, but it's, it wasn't screwed in all the way. It's, it's only, I can loosen it with my fingers. Um, and so when it was being vibrated by the belt, it just worked its way loose. It's, it's gonna be a little wobbly, but I this set screwed it up before. Almost in. You might need a hammer. Yeah, I think so. Okay, hold that saw. I don't know where the hammer is. 
There we go. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. There. I just need to tighten that. I'm gonna guess it's one of these. Grab a whole bunch just to be sure. Just take them for a walk? Uh, yeah, just try to the walk. Oh, okay. Have fun, Henry. Henry's going for a walk in town, trying to get him used to as many other dogs and people as possible. Oh, I wasn't calling you. Good boy. Good boy. All right. What do you know? It's the first one that I picked. Wait, I'm loosening it. <laughs> See ya! There we go. That should do it. Well, during the commercial break, unless you have ad blocker, I noticed that I actually sheared that bolt off. Hopefully it's tight enough in there and will never be an issue. <laughs> but I got two table saws, so we'll just switch over to the other one. Ah, okay. Turn the music back on. Yeah, I got 
Bam, done. And they all seem to work fine. Now I gotta figure out finishing and stuff. And speaking of finishing, Linda has finished for the day, which thank you so much. She did a lot. I don't know if you guys can tell, probably you can tell a lot. This is a lot cleaner. Cleaned off a lot of the workbenches, all the floors, organized a bunch of yeah. random stuff, a lot of supplies. Got the art trunk looking a little better. We gotta worry about getting a new tarp in there and stuff, so not spending too much time in there. But yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Well, anytime, I will be back. She will be back. I'll be back. <laughs> 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 she just walks right past you. Oh, and see. No, she can't. She needs a haircut again. She also just might be a little nervous. But if you stay still long enough, they'll probably go over to your hand. Oh, here comes Blue. She knows. Now that she's doing it, probably a couple others will do it. Oh. But Millie's your favorite, right? It looks like Phoebe's laying an egg right now. Well, oh, even Henrietta was thinking about it. That's rare. <laughs> Millie still ain't going for the hands. She's like right underneath your hand. That's hilarious. It's funny, I got her a handful of sunflower seeds so she could specifically feed Millie and Millie is accidentally or purposely somehow completely avoiding the Good source. Now. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I wonder, I'm gonna see if Phoebe's laying an egg or what she's doing, maybe she might just be chilling in here somewhere. We got one egg here. That's a fake egg and that's a fake egg. There she is, another egg here. That's another fake egg. What do you got under you? Just a fake egg, okay. We have the fake egg so that the new chickens uh, would know where to lay their eggs. I'll put these eggs inside. No blue egg yet today, but we got a white and a cream. Two left. <laughs> She's all like, what the heck is this? You don't have any food, don't touch me now. <laughs> oh, there's one left. Done. All right. Work is now paid for. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of work, I guess I better get back to it. But first, let's have a little bit of a snack. And don't worry, I washed my hands after handling the chicken eggs. No salmonella for me. This is barbecue. This is almost as boring as sanding, which is the next part in this build to get ready for doing whatever color I'm gonna do. So let's skip both of these things, sanding and me eating. Well, can confirm, very boring, but I crushed it a little bit. It's a lot more fun eating chips than it is sanding. But I got them all to about what I want in preparation to coloring them. And I also sanded all of my brackets as well. Also boring. Sanding is almost always boring, but it is also boring when it's this bullshit here. But we got it all done and we got each piece kind of uh, cut and ready for the next step. But before we attach those, 
let's color these and let them cure while I figure out how to attach those. Just flying by the seat of my pants here. Let's see here, what do we want? Special walnut, golden oak, and of course, our boiled linseed oil. These are a different type of wood than that, so it's probably gonna look a little different. So we'll do a little test here. Yeah, <laughs> that's not even close. So we're definitely gonna to have to do one of those. Probably special walnut, I'm gonna say, is gonna be the closest to that. This time I'm gonna stir it up though. Because a lot of the pigment settles at the bottom. Not all of it, but a good deal of it. Let's see here. Okay. We got golden oak, doesn't do anything. Special walnut. Yeah, it does something. Not sure though if it's the right color we're going for. We'll be able to see better if we let it sit for a little longer, but definitely golden oak and the oil are way wrong. So let's just let that sit for a little bit and then we'll wipe it off. It'll show a little differently on the more smooth areas. You don't want the wood to be too terribly smooth because then it'll close the grain and it won't soak it up. But yeah, it's kind of a happy medium it has to do with like the porosity of the of the wood versus how the stain penetrates and whatever dyes would be a little different but i don't have any dyes and i don't know exactly what makes them better or not as good or whatever the prevailing opinion is a lot of this is opinion by the way when I'm talking about how I like to stain it or not stain oil versus stain oil, lots of that is opinion. What is a nice grain and what woods are nice and not nice, it's all opinion. Because I think oak is hideous. There's a lot of uh, differing opinion, of course, in, in almost everything. But when it comes to the woodworking community, it can be pretty, uh, like, lots of headbutting going on depending on what you do and that goes with using these uh, big box store uh, stains as well for me I don't really care I don't classify myself as a woodworker and uh, as you'll see <laughs> I'm not very good at it I have an idea as to how I'm going to connect those now and I've never done it before so we'll see we'll see we're gonna put my skills to the test all right do I like that color? I like the color, but do I think that it matches? No, but maybe that doesn't matter. I'm not sure what to do. But since I know that it has to be darker, this won't hurt if I start with this color because I can always stain over top of it. Oh, there we go. That's a little darker there on these pieces of wood. Let's see on the actual part that's going to show up. Now, each piece of wood is going to be slightly different because this is SPF. This is like your lumber grade wood. Uh, in Canada, this is what we would consider our grade A wood. It's kiln dried and it's made up of spruce, pine, and fir, which is what SPF stands for. So, who knows? Maybe this is uh, a fir tree. Maybe this is a pine tree and maybe this is a spruce tree. Or maybe they're all the same type of tree, you know? It's really hard to tell. But you see how that grain is popping now? Definitely a good enhancement. Whereas like the oil, nothing really popped. So again, it's a matter of opinion, but I would say that this looks better than this. But again, it's an opinion. You know what might look good and maybe add add to the design part of it is if I put a a bevel here if I chamfered two edges I might look really sharp I might do that yep that's what we're doing that's what we're doing did I say earlier that we're flying by the seat of my pants
I can't remember if I said that to the camera or to Linda or to myself. But either way, this is a figure it out as I go kind of build. There we go. And a bonus, got a bunch of stir sticks. Or kindling. I don't really know where to put these because everything is so much cleaner now and I don't want to make a mess. <laughs> They'll go here for now. Ooh, very nice. I like that. That is freaking dope. Yeah, just that little chamfer there, it adds so much. Okay, perfect. So I can finish staining this. These. So I can finish staining these. <laughs> uh, Alright. Oh, I'm an idiot. I need to do more sanding. I'm doing everything out of order. See, I told you I'm not a real woodworker. <laughs> there's more than uh, one right way to do this, but there's even more wrong ways to do it, so. Do I look worried? I look dusty. I'm not worried. I, <laughs> if anything was to worry about, it's that it's, a completely wrong color. So since I'm gonna have to like restain them anyway, it doesn't matter that I gotta do some more work on them. Plus, I have to make some more cuts to them uh, after I figure out these angles anyway. I'm gonna crush it. Stupid pun. Same pun twice in one freaking video. <laughs> it's gonna look good in the end. While I'm waiting for those to dry and be the wrong color, we are going to figure this out. I need these to be at a, you know, an angle like this. Imagine a, a sawhorse. So to achieve this with a decently clean look, I've come up with this little system here. This is a pretty crude jig, but I think it should uh, do the trick in achieving the uh, desired angle. Hopefully this angle isn't too steep. Uh, it doesn't look like much here, but it can quickly get away from you if, uh, you know what, why don't we just test it straight off the bat here. Maybe I just wasted a bunch of time. I like that. That'll work. Okay. Now that we've tested it, we know it will work. Now, so I can replicate it each time. Uh, I've also made this removable part so I can trace my lines out on all eight uh, leg things. Now to get these dadoed out, I am going to be using a handsaw. And this is what I mean by testing my skills. I'm gonna lay it flat against my jig here and basically go back and forth until I meet my mark on the two sides here. So I'm gonna have to keep checking it. But if I keep pressed against here, it should work. Then I gotta do it here as well. Actually, come to think of it, I probably should have done this line first. Can you tell I haven't done this before? Maybe I'll just make this line first, then do that one, and then hog out the, the middle part, which I don't really know how I'm gonna do this yet. There's probably easier ways to do this, but it's tapered, so this is all I can think of. But it's working. Switching out this saw for this saw. This is a Japanese pole saw, and I think it will give me a little more control. I 
I may have to cut from both sides, but I'm already liking this better. Keep in mind that this board here is cupped, so I have to factor that in as well, because these are going to be welded together once they are seated in nicely. So it's going to be a long, flat piece of steel. And if there's a hump in there, it's not going to seat nicely. I'll figure it out. There we go. Now I got to move it over to there. And then do it all over again. The thing about these Japanese saws is they work on the pole, hence the name, pole saw. Whereas these saws, they work on the push to give you less control so they kind of get a little wobbly. Plus this is a really long blade compared to this one here. Whoops. until this happens. But now, I have to cut this, and I don't know, like chisels or what? Because like I can't, I can't cut it like this, that, that's not gonna work. Uh, let's try chisels. I hope that this doesn't screw it up, but the saving grace will be that this is a rustic build. So it won't matter too much if we screw up a little bit. But I'll probably screw up a lot. Okay. On my line, I think I like. Okay, I can live with that. That's probably normal. I'm starting to think that this is a piece of fur. That's what this grain looks like to me. If I did my lines right, it should come out the other side nicely. That remains to be seen. Okay, and then keep going. Well, I'm just trying to figure out how to cut these dados because they're at an angle to be able to hold these uh, at the proper angle. But since this is a soft wood, it's got really wide grain, uh, really open grain too, so it's kind of shredding it. So I think on my second dado, which is gonna be right here, is uh, it's, I'm gonna try a different method. We'll, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. May as well keep butchering this one. Is stop for a sec? That actually might, that actually might be doing it. It's like a cheese grater. Very tedious, but I think that'll work. I wonder if, I wonder if it would matter. Well, that seems to be working, so I may as well keep going. Now that I give it a little sand in here. Not perfect, but it should be working. Okay, if I did this right, this should 
Oh, there we go. Fit in there just so. Perfect. I like that. Look, they fit. They almost, they almost didn't fit because uh, this weld was in the way, so I had to cut that off. <laughs> But now they fit in there nice. Now I just have to do it uh, three more times. Oh no. But now you don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I know how to do it. And I actually found a better way to do it. For this one in particular here, what I've done is I've cut, I've cross cut it to the same depth following our uh, taper our angle here and uh, then stuck my chisel in and broke the pieces out seems to be working this is the trick that I'm sure you can use it in many applications than I have but when I first started doing this this is when we would frame houses if we needed to do like a lap joint or you know a dado or anything like that you just have a circular saw you just run your saw through the board several times and then smack all the pieces out with a hammer. Since this is a little more fine, I'm not smacking it, I'm gonna be a little more careful. Take it out with the chisel, smooth it out with the rasp, and then take my sanding block and sand it out, and it should turn out like this, and hopefully go a little faster and smoother. And then, if it works, I'll do the same with those two down there. I don't know. Let me let you know what we did. Let me let you know what we did. Did I really just say that? Does that even make any sense? That is dumb. Uh, but that is exactly what we did here. It just seemed to work so well with the second one that I decided to do it with the other two. I'm not sure if it's the most efficient method to do this kind of work. I'm not really experienced in this discipline. I'm sure that more seasoned woodworkers, especially hand tool woodworkers, would have more efficient ways to do this. But I think that this was a valid method because it worked. Basically just cut a whole bunch of cross cuts to a set depth and then take all of that material away with a chisel was pretty easy to do that. And after that, it's gonna be rough. So I have to use the chisel and the rasp to get it down a little bit smoother. And then after that, just take a little block sander to it and get it nice and smooth to be able to fit in our little brackets here, which by the way, I decided to make them a little looser fitting so that we wouldn't run into issues when the wood shrinks because these are going to expand and contract at different rates uh, due to the changes in the in atmospheric pressure and humidity and all that jazz. And I didn't want to run into issues with wood cracking because it won't be able to move the metal over because it sits between it. And as I was doing that, uh, trying to make every piece fit just perfect, I miscalculated and this one here sits a little far away from uh, its seat. <laughs> but I'm not too worried about it. You can even see here, I drew the line the wrong way. Imagine I made that mistake, that would have sucked. <laughs> so yeah, you can see that's a pretty huge gap. I just miscalculated somehow and then didn't double check with my actual piece. And then when I grinded this down, I, uh, I actually had to stop because my first test fit, I was like, wow, that's way too loose. But I still have to uh, weld all these pieces together to make them singles with all four here. And uh, while I do that, I will add some material here as well, some weld here, and then that will fill up that gap. And then once these are bolted down, it should seat nicely and it won't be noticeable. 
So all this hassle and even my mistakes and all that factored in, totally worth it. Not only am I learning and furthering my skill set, having these details here adds so much to a piece like this. I could have just set them on top like this and then bent these at an angle to get the same type of effect, but having it seated into the piece of wood into dados like this just adds a little extra to a piece that I really enjoy. So to me, it's worth the... Uh, Ugh, the frustration <laughs> and my arm got quite a workout sawing each one of these yeah it was whatever now it's time to go test out this new gas <laughs> uh, that was so stupid Oh, hey. Let's go. Good. Do you mind being in the vlog? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Dang, that fits perfect. So, I have this jointer here. And my friend Vanessa, who's also a woodworker, is, uh, is going to take it because I don't need this one because we have that one, which we never use anyway. Also, we have that one over there. So Got just a few. Yeah, this one is yours. It's a nice little beaver. Works nicely. It's got a nice sharp uh, set of knives on there. I will happily put it to use. Heavy cast iron, yeah. <laughs> so if you guys want to see what she does, I'll put her socials in the, in the description. <clears throat> All right, let's load this. All right, now back to this. It's actually pretty good. I like, I like that. Once that's bolted down, or I might have to bend it a little bit to actually make it meet nicely. Perfect. Now I gotta figure out what I wanna do with the legs. I gotta sand all these chamfers, because I didn't do that already. And then I gotta figure out, I think I'm going to paint these, but what color? Do I wanna do white? Do I wanna do black? Oh, I know what I'll do. Since these have had time to cure, I will just primer them white. It'll look decently close to what white paint will look like. We can mock it up, see if we like it. Ashley was saying that she might like black. I was saying that white might look good. This way we can kind of test both. We can see if we like it mocked up in white. If not, we can just paint over the primer with black and hopefully that looks good. If not, I don't know what the heck to do. <laughs> Maybe it'll just have to be a bench. Uh, for now, I have uh, stained these. I did actually try to uh, oil them, but since we had gone so deep, we were down to the yellow wood, which makes me think again that maybe this isn't fur. But anyway, since it didn't give it any color, I decided that I would stain it the golden oak color, which is actually pretty close, but also not even close at the same time. <laughs> That's basically what the legs were just a moment ago before priming. But that won't matter because they're going to be covered up and bolted. You won't ever see it. Uh, I was just worried about a little white peeking through and screaming at us that it's a totally different color and doesn't really go. So just to be safe, stain that. 
Now, waiting for that to dry so that we can mock this up and have Ashley give her opinion. She's just outside in the chicken coop uh, doing a deep clean before winter. Do this every year in the springtime and then in the fall time, do a full on clean. You might be able, if you listen carefully, be able to hear the uh, vacuum cleaner. Oh, she just turns it off. <laughs> Oh man, that's uh, perfect timing. Perfectly bad timing, maybe? I don't know. How you doing, Henry? How you doing, Gina? Ash, I got it mocked up. If you want to come have a look at it. Hold on, just keep that on for a second. So, <laughs> is, <laughs> is this a good look? <laughs> Okay, come have a look at this real quick. See if you like it in white or if you'd like it in black. Okay, so you have to use your imagination a little bit because it's upside down, but what do you think of the white and this brownish color together? Keep in mind, these are not very solid white yet because it's just uh, rolled on primer. But if those were solid white and we have this color, or do you think we should paint them black? It's hard to say. I'm thinking like what I could do because I do know that since I dated these down really deep that the wood is is pretty white underneath. So if you want the wood to be a lighter color, I could throw it into the planer uh, and then take a little bit of a top layer off and restain it so it kind of matches maybe our kitchen table, how it has a, a brown on top. I could stain it the same type of color and then a white base. Maybe? Maybe. Should I try that? Yeah, I'm gonna try that. But then do you have to redato them then? Nope, I don't have to redato anything. I'm just going to plane the top. Oh. The bottom doesn't matter so much. Oh, I see what you're saying. And the sides? Or and the know? sides I'll have to take a little bit off the side too. Don't want to take too much because I don't want it to get too skinny. Right. But that won't be a big deal, I don't think. Okay. Okay, let's try that. There we go. Now what we'll show will be a lot lighter. And for this, I know that I'm going to be using some special walnut because that is Ashley's absolute favorite. And that's likely to match the rest of what we have wood-wise in our house. Don't have to worry about this side because that's gonna be facing the wall. Don't have to worry about the underside, which I'm worried about chip out now because there's those dados because that's going to be underneath. If it makes a huge difference, then I guess I'll have to spend a bunch of time sanding it. But let's see what the special walnut is doing. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not that I like this color the best. And one of my favorite species of wood is black walnut. Uh, that's the whole point of stain is to make it uh, like these cheap, undesirable woods look more like some more uh, expensive, desirable woods. But uh, I don't know, it doesn't really look like it. It looks completely different, to me anyway, but it's still a really nice color, I think. Again, it's opinion. I'm leaving these saw marks on there just to add a little bit of character to it because I took some character away. If they look bad after they're highlighted with this, then I'll sand them off. All I did was give it a, a light sand with this bad boy in the transition, if you know what I mean. There we go. This is going to look pretty good, I think, actually. I'm glad that I suggested this. Yeah, 
that looks freaking fantastic to me. Opinion. Okay. I'm thinking of also getting some blackening for the steel so that it's a little more subtle. Uh, I'll have to go pick that up, but since I have to go pick up some hardware anyway, I may as well do all of that while this is drying. Remember, throw out your oily rags. In a safe manner. Don't want to burn down your shop. Or at least I don't. That's also a matter of opinion. <laughs> <gasps> They're out. That's because of me. I'm the reason why they don't have any more of whatever size bolt this is. I wasn't sure how many I needed. I just knew that I needed the shortest half inch bolt that they had. So I just bought them all so that I would hopefully have enough in the end. I'm just about ready to use them. I need a hammer. Pretty easy to find the bolts, but the, uh, the, the chemical solution for blackening the metal on the other hand, that was way harder to find. I didn't really know what it was called, so I didn't really know where to look exactly. I've heard of gun bluing, and I think that's the same stuff, so I uh, contacted some local gun shops, but they were either closed or didn't have it. So then I went to every big box store, asked if they had a chemical that did this, no one had anything. And then I also uh, went to some of the specialty shops that cater uh, more so to makers, and they didn't have any either. But luckily I remembered that Ashley's cousin, also my friend Alex, uh, is a blacksmith. Yeah, that one's sick too. So these are a couple knives that he's made, and this is kind of the effect we're going for. So hopefully I do it right. This one has less, hey? Yeah, that's when I've been roughing it up a lot more. Yeah, more use. This is like a... This one also has like a stone wash on it. Oh, okay. So that's why it's... Kind of like that little glistening, kind of flickering to it. Right. But I think, yeah, I think that will work for me. Yeah, if you just, just do like a straight uh, acid wash. <laughs> oh, dude, and that's a... A painting that I've done. Yeah, there's the... And another one! <laughs> Excellent. But anyways, that's kind of the chemical reaction we're going for, but different, because this has a stone, stone wash on it. But the solution should blacken it somewhat like this. <laughs> I'm cleaning. You're just gonna burn the place down. No, no. Don't worry. That's why I did it on here and not on the wooden bench. <laughs> um, now with my clean hands, I will take the burning hot metal. What? Is it hot? No. And then place it into here. Wow, that one's a little hot, but I think I have all those flames. Your table's still on fire. So that was last night. Unfortunately, this morning, it seemed as though whatever this chemical was, it lost its gusto. It didn't really work. So I went old school. Instead of doing a cold process, I decided to I decided to do a hot process. So I got them all nicely heated up. In fact, they're really hot. You can see they just burned all the leaves that were around there. That used to not be like that, but I've stomped it out. There's no way I can carry those back to the shop like this. I'll have to wait for it to cool or find a different method than with gloved hands. But I got some uh, coat hangers hanging up here in the art trunk that I think will help carry them over.
Okay, I imagine this is not gonna be the most elegant way to do this. I got one. If I stack them, should work. I wish I had some, uh, well that probably wasn't smart. I wish I had some better tools for this, which I probably do, but this is seeming to work. Ah, come on, it's really hot on my face. <laughs> okay, we got this one right here. Really hot on my camera hand, ironically. Not the hand that's closer. Okay, let's see if I can grab it from here. There we go. Yep, that's definitely burning my shoe. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try to straighten this out a little more. This is so primitive, I should totally just go get something proper, but I'm committed now. I'm gonna shove this through the bigger holes and then that this whole thing will become a handle once this is cooled, which it is now. Okay, let's see if this will work. It's a little warm on my hands. Okay, got it in. Now, come on, come on. I think that'll work. Now if I can just grab that little bit in there. Wow, this is so dumb, but also potentially smart. <laughs> what do you guys think? Oh, oh, she must be here. That must be the lady for my painting. Or her painting, I guess, that I painted for her. Okay, let me pull this away so it doesn't get heated up. I gotta go meet her. There we go. Got it. So that's gonna be a heavy table then, hey? <laughs> the books all seem light. <laughs> yeah, it is gonna be a heavy table. Okay, let's go check out your painting, shall we? This way into this room here. So it's a little messy because we've got a lot of projects going on, but uh, oh. I uh, covered it up. To do your passion, that's amazing. So she had commissioned me to paint this a couple months ago as a gift for her husband for their anniversary. Yeah, my husband, it was our anniversary. And so he got a painting done for me, and I had no idea. And I had already contacted you to do the painting. Oh. And then he contacted a, another person, a local person, to do a different painting of an animal for me. And I'm like, holy shit, we freaking did the same freaking gift. Yeah. Totally two separate artists. But, oh my god, you look amazing. I'm glad you like it. I was kind of, like, this is an experiment. Like, obviously I like using a lot of color. But this one I only used basically just one color. Yeah, I so, like the purple in the hair just to give it that little... Just a little bit, right? Yeah. We can take it out if you want. And he's such a very um. Yeah, I have no idea who this guy is, so I didn't, I didn't know <laughs> what vibe to go with. Well, you hit the vibe because he's a very um, spiritual teacher in the, in the sense of like uh, plant medicine, ayahuasca. And, okay. Yeah, so... Is he still alive? He's not. Oh, okay. No, he's not still alive. Oh, he's going to love it. It's going to ayahuasca with us next week, too. Okay. So the timing was perfect. Well, I'm glad I finished it. I was like, you know what? I, I think I'm ready to do this one. And then I was just like, okay. So usually I'll start with white, but this canvas is kind of cool because it's silver. Oh, yes. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll just do a blue to see what the blue for blocking it in. And I was like, actually, that was kind of dope. It's just blue. So then I was just like, I'll just keep going blue. And then I did a little bit of purple in there, but... You know, all cold colors, it kind of... Which fits him, because there's not much... I don't know him very much either. He's one of my husband's follows him, or uh -huh. follows his work. But he's very, like... People, like, start laughing. Like, hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, the colds work. <laughs> well, Perfect. Good. Well, I'm glad you like it. Hopefully he likes it, too. Yes. I hope he likes it. But he if will. he's like, oh, blue? That sucks. No, I know my husband very well. That's probably good. <laughs> for this one. Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you for coming out and grabbing that. All right. Okay, wait. What's a video log? Oh, I'll send you the link. 
Okay. This is yeah. gonna be a long video though, because it's about making that table that you said was gonna be heavy. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, I'm in. Thank you. You're welcome. Man, I really enjoy when people love the work that I do for them. That's awesome. Anyway, after she left, since they were in the fire, they got a little warped and wonky, so I had to take a hammer to them so that I could straighten them out so they could fit in the dados nicely. And then, after that, I decided to clean a little bit of the scale off with uh, some wire brushing, just so that they looked a little cleaner. And then, here we are. They're not quite as black as I would like them to be, but they're still pretty good. They still need a clear coat to be put on them, so fingers crossed that they'll look a little better. Now, at this point, I can put on these legs. The thing that's kind of funny is that since we redid the top and we have this uh, walnut color, we could have kept those walnut because they would have matched. Close, anyways. But they're white, so let's just go with what we have now. <laughs>
Finally! See all that? That's how many times it took. So if you can open your hearts for the next few minutes, I really appreciate it. on my shirt. Ugh. go done I gotta tell you these were a huge pain in the ass because these angles are not all the same there's a lot of compounding angles so this and this angle are slightly different but also this way they're slightly different because these metal things here are all slightly different because they're all hand bent and I couldn't bend them I tried to get them all the same. So if we go further back, you can see they don't perfectly line up. Heat and brute force, just with the way that these brackets were assembled, was not working with what I had on hand. I was just making them worse. But that's okay because I don't mind it being slightly off like that because of, you know, it's a rustic build. If this was supposed to be a little more precise, that would bug the crap out of me and I would have tried to find a way 
to bend those. But I didn't notice until I had them all welded together and were put and was putting on the legs. So I was just like, you know what? Screw it. These are supposed to mimic sawhorses. Sawhorses are often just put together. These obviously took forever compared to what you would have on a job site, just thrown together to uh, use on site. But whatever. I like it. I'm not even sure what these brackets were originally made for. And so besides that being a pain in the butt, I also had a little bit of a pain in the hand, if you will, with this right here. So even though I marked my drill bit with this piece of tape for the proper depth to uh, fit my bolts in, because the bolts are obviously too long, which is why I cut them, uh, I drilled through the whole thing anyway by accident and got my hand. That was just a little nibble, but still hurt. Could have been worse though. Since I did that, I decided to use the one bolt that I hadn't yet cut off to plug the hole, but obviously it's too long. I was thinking about doing this with all of them, but I wasn't sure how it was gonna look. So I guess now, now we'll see. Yep, I dig that. That actually turned out pretty okay for an accident. Of course, it's a little messy because, you know, it got kind of a little chopped up because it wasn't intentional. If I would have been intentional about it, it would be a lot cleaner. But uh, I can imagine those being on each one. It's kind of like this detail here with the, with the dowels. Oh well, there's just gonna be one as a reminder of uh, this little nibble here. <laughs> okay, uh, could you help me flip this down? Yep. That is cool. Oh, I got a little paint on the top. Or a lot of paint. A little heavy. There we go. Let this cure and then clear coat and it's done. Some of the clear coat I can actually do right now, such as the metal clear coat. Uh, Clint has just left so I can do this. He has uh, nerve issues when there's a lot of fumes in the shop. So uh, he left for the day. He's gonna finish that off tomorrow or something like that. So it's safe to do this. Perfect use for a sawhorse. I wanted these to be nice and black. They're more so gray, but maybe this will help a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, I'm liking that. Well, this stuff is good to go on paint as well, so not too worried about that. Here, I'll show you the difference here. I like the way that the clear coat is popping the scale that I left. It's hard to see, but this one is a little darker. Doesn't do a lot, but perhaps it's enough. There we go. Perfect, look how black those are. They look great. Now in a couple hours, I should be able to do the top here. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get out of here because fumes are not good for you even if you don't have nerve issues. Uh, my buddy Jarrett should be here in a few minutes where we're going to finish off this piece of hemlock.
mentioned this earlier, so I didn't mention what it was for. This is going to be a mantelpiece, but we're having such difficulty trying to cut an L out of it. We're basically trying to take this middle chunk out of it. It's hard. So I did cut what I could with my circular saw all the way down the lengthwise. I ripped it on two sides, uh, but it doesn't go deep enough. So what I'm going to have to do is either buy or borrow a tool that's going to be able to cut the rest of the uh, depth because both my circular saw and the table saw cannot cut that depth, unfortunately. So, I don't know. That'll have to be a future uh, solution. Reciprocating saw was a little too flimsy, but also, and this will be in the bonus video, <laughs> I made this. And since that didn't work, we're gonna try something with the band saw blade. And hopefully, this will work. But it probably won't, with our luck. It probably won't. Well, it's long enough. Tape some handles on there, and I think we'll be. Uh, I think we'll be good. It's working. Pull harder. <laughs> I bent it. I bent it. Oh shit! Hold on a sec. No, don't push. Just okay. pull. Pull. Oh shit! Okay, put on some gloves. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> More forceful. Do you want one? Ah, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You pull it harder. So last time we were hoping not to do this because it's a little messy. Can't be as precise, but. Of course this would happen. Why wouldn't it happen? This is just our luck. We got a decent ways through, but then we stopped, and now we can't get it started again. We're not sure what's going on, but dang, it is frustrating. Like last week, we couldn't do with all the other methods. We didn't want to do the chainsaw inside because it was dark outside, so we couldn't do it outside, but we didn't want to do it inside because of carbon monoxide. I already had carbon monoxide poisoning twice. Wasn't about to get it again. Now it's a nice day out. It works and now it doesn't work. Ah, <laughs> uh, we shouldn't have stopped. Okay, so Jarrett decided to rent a chainsaw they're regularly maintained and tested, so hopefully it's not gonna conk out on us and we can finally get this bad boy cut all the way to our our L point or whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So we couldn't start that one. So Jared goes and grabs mine and it starts on the second pole. <laughs> Let's not turn it off. Let's just go for it. Yeah! Where did he turn down? 
coming up. So, it did start in the end, and it is a good saw, and it has a really sharp blade or uh, chain, whereas mine uh, is worn out from doing uh, a lot of work uh, with it with my buddy Tony, who, by the way, gave me that slab of wood that I'm making that table with. So, yeah. But here's the reason why we didn't want to use chainsaw. It's not very precise, at least not for people with beards our length. <laughs> so we just need to uh, clean that up a little bit and I think, I think it'll be good. From this wall not being plumb, which we didn't account for, fits pretty good. Fits pretty good, and that's why we wanted it to be an L, so it wouldn't sit too high up, because that would have looked stupid or been impractical. Because for whatever reason, the electric is really low. It's kind of weird how they build these newer homes. They're just like, oh, just put it anywhere. But we made it all work together, and I. Freaking dig it. It's got this uh, golden oak stain on there. Looks really good on that on that beam. I even like how I took out the dry rot and it's got like this little hole. I just, I don't know. Lots of character in this beam. Anyway, let's get back to this table. <laughs> <laughs> You want to check out the whole cutting fiasco I'll put a separate deleted scene esque video in the description that you can check out that was uh, that was a long painful process trying to get that thing uh, cut properly but in the end worked out pretty good now all I got to do is poly this make some space in the uh, dining room move all that stuff out of the way and Oh. <laughs> Whoops. That was close. What I was going to say is it should all be good. And to me, it is good. It fits perfectly in this spot here. But none of that really matters unless Ashley likes it. So what do you think about I really this? Like it. You do? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad. I mean, it's a bit of an unconventional design. Because, you know, like, <laughs> that doesn't look good. That looks bad. But I think with our combination of materials and colors here, it really works out well. Still unsure of what species of wood this is. Do any of you have an idea or a guess? Clint thinks that it's spruce based off of the grain closer to the heart here. I think it's fir based off of this grain here because it's very similar to this shelf here, which is also fir but can't be certain. Can't always judge uh, very precisely. I mean, fur can be yellow or red, so it couldn't really base it off of that. And it can have tight grain like this and a little more open grain like this. So I'm not sure, but what I do know is that I like the way it complements this piece here. So I'm very happy because this took way longer than I expected it to. I thought it would take me like maybe two days, but I've been working on it since Sunday, right? Yeah, and today is Thursday, so, <laughs> but to be fair, there was other things spruced in there. We had to do some stuff in the garden, you know, I got interrupted a few times, like uh, taking Henry for walks. We're really working on his socialization while he's young, so trying to get him used to any animal and every animal. So we even brought him over to Armando's to meet Seiko and Bowser, so they played for a bit. Uh, we thought our neighbor's house was on fire. Uh, Hans got his beard chopped off, you know, stuff like that. Plus all the stuff that you saw. But anyway, 
as is common with on the fly projects like this, I learned some stuff, got some practice in, and we ended up with a pretty nice piece of furniture for our dining room here. I understand that this probably wouldn't be everybody's aesthetic, but it works for so many different styles like farmhouse, uh, industrial, uh, a mixture of those two, rustic, whatever you're going for, even like modern, more contemporary. I think it works with everything, but it's definitely gonna work for what we have going on in this room. Like the light, which we don't have yet, and the table, which we don't have yet, and the floor, which we do have, but haven't installed, it's all gonna kind of work together. We're also gonna take down this map and uh, put some other piece of art there. Not sure exactly what just yet, but everything's going to be kind of cohesive. Um, That'll probably go down to the office whenever I get that done. And since the computer is not here anymore, I guess I should probably finish these baseboards to put in the office project that we've been working on for the past, how long? Year, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably a year. That is something that we've been working on kind of here and there. Uh, but now we're going to need it. Whoa, dang guys, you've made it through my longest ever recorded vlog, I think. It was like three and a half hours of raw footage, something like that. That included like setting up the camera, turning it on, turning it off and all that jazz. But I've narrowed it down to whatever it's at uh, while still maintaining the full like up and down story of this build. I was not expecting it to turn out like this. Actually, I wasn't even expecting to make it, period. But here you are, within the bonus scene, still watching. By the way, uh, sidebar, should I bring back beam golf? This is the, the beam where I cut the L out of with Jarrett for his project there. And it's the original beam golf beam. I just put it here because I don't have any use for it right now. But uh, maybe beam golf will come back. This golf is fun, but so is beam golf. But anyway, it's a shame when people skip the uh, the bonus scenes because I know a lot, I would say probably most people do because there is uh, there's oftentimes valuable information in them or you know just a little something extra or something funny or you know whatever. In this case, it's a reminder uh, for context on the next vlog coming out. It would behoove you <laughs> to use a word that I don't understand where, what the origin is because it sounds so dumb, but it would behoove you to watch another vlog number 112. It'll just add some context. If you're new and haven't watched my full catalog of videos, or maybe you just forgot, but go watch that video now. And then when the next vlog comes out, it'll make a lot more sense because some of you will have forgotten. Some of you wouldn't even know because you may have skipped that video but you may not skip the next one so go back watch another vlog 112 i'll put a link in the description okay see you another time thanks for watching